Hello, I'm Michael. This video is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. What I'm going to try to show is a composite pipeline in Blender. It'll start with doing some footage on my Android phone using an app called Blender Track by CG Tinker. And then I'm going to use a Ricoh Theta S 360-degree camera to snap some images and then turn those into an HDRI in Photoshop. Then I'm going to put that in Blender. I'm going to throw in a model that I made that's uh, animated and add a particle effect. And at the end, I'm going to have this incredibly awesome animation that looks just like a blockbuster movie. I swear it's going to be excellent. Or maybe not. Let's get to it. Blend AR track used to be called Retargeter, so that's what it is on my phone. Oh, made with Unity. Unreal Engine is better. So, point it at something where you're going to film, then start looking for planes. And in this case, I wanted to see a plane on the floor and a plane on the seat of the chair. Next, you gotta place a minimum of three reference points. So we'll put one on the seat of the chair where I wanna sit an asset. Get it, sit an asset. And then one on each of the legs. Why not? I'm not actually gonna use this video. I already took one out in the snow. So I'm gonna use that one. Oh yeah. And then hit record and take your magic movie. Now I'll show you how to use the Ricoh Theta S 360 degree camera. Oh, ain't it pretty? Turn the power on, turn the Wi-Fi on, open up the Theta app on your phone of choice, hit the little eye icon in the bottom right, click access point mode. If it doesn't come up with this, you'll need to connect with your actual Wi-Fi settings. Now, I'm already in multi-bracket mode, so hit the little gear icon for settings. You can go to normal shooting, which will be your default. We're not using that, so hit that little gear icon again. Go to multi-bracket shooting. Now, nothing here, hit the plus sign. Nothing on the screen, that's because it's all whited out. So we have to find a shutter speed and an ISO that actually lets us see anything. So a lower ISO means that there's less brightness and a higher shutter speed means that there's less brightness. So we're trying to find a median point here and then we can go a few levels up and a few levels down. However, it's a super sunny day so I basically have to start at the max range of this camera. So we'll start with that, work our way down. Thankfully, I got a couple pictures earlier in the day in the exact same spot, so I can use those as a sort of dark balancing act. It's a good idea to get six to eight to 10 photos. If your wireless drops out, don't worry, just hit that I button again on the bottom right and you will reconnect. I'm about eight meters away, 20 feet, so there's a little bit of a lag here. I'm also hiding so I don't show up in the shots. And hit the shutter button. It makes a little beep every time it takes a picture. Of course, I can't hear it from that far away and I'm not gonna put it in here because it's pretty annoying. Shooting is done. Go back, click on camera images, refresh the screen. Got some gray ones. Now it's a good idea to select the first and the last one and transfer them to your phone so that you can take a look at them and make sure that you actually got your whitest white and your darkest dark without going too far. So I got a light one and a medium point one really so I won't be able to get a fully dark lighting scene later on. It'll be okay. And we're done. The next step is to get the images on your computer. I like to transfer them directly off the camera itself by plugging it in USB.
And now to use Photoshop to make an HDRI. Open your files, all of them. File, automate, merge to HDR Pro. Use files, add open files. Don't need to attempt to automatically align them if they are all from your same 360 degree camera. And make sure you're on 32 bit. And make sure complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw is not checked. That will make it 16-bit, which we don't want. So you can go through and see the effect that turning different images on and off will have. Typically, just remove any blurry ones. Can't use them, don't want them. Hit OK. Wahoo, there you go. Got a new HDR. Simply file, save as, Radiance HDR. And you're good. Now one other thing you can do if you so desire is you can use the uh, image adjustments and you can play around a little bit. So you can make it brighter or darker. In my case, I want to make it a little darker since it was so bright outside. I saved this new image and I'm ready for Blender. Open up Blender, new scene, A select all, X delete it, Edit, Preferences, search for Blender Track. Actually, you probably can't do that. What you'll need to do is go Install, navigate to the zip file, wherever you downloaded it to, and select it, and then say Install Add-on. I, however, already have it installed, just not active. Haha, <laughs> lucky me. Now over here, you have a Blender Track option. So we need to get the video footage off our phone. Back into Blender Track, hit the file icon. Now you can select one or all of the files. However, let me tell you what's actually going to happen when you hit the share button. So when you hit share, it creates a zip of whatever files are selected. If you have one file selected, that creates a zip with the movie footage and the tracking data that you require to have it work in Blender. If you select multiple files, it creates a zip for each one of those and places it in another zip file, which Blender track add-on for Blender cannot read, so you must unzip them first. It can only read a single layer of zipped goodness. So I prefer to work with one file and Blender Track doesn't really handle multiple files anyway. So one file it is. And you can share it to wherever you want. However, that can take some time for a longer movie. So I prefer to just get at it myself. To do that, plug your phone into your computer, open up Blender Track, select your file, hit share, then the zip file gets created on the phone. Navigate to the proper directory, grab the zip file, and now you're ready to rock back into Blender. First, we grab the file. Then we import it. And we're pretty much done. Got the camera there, hit zero, and hit play. So what makes this app absolutely great is that it does all the work of tracking the camera for you. You'll notice as I play this video that the camera has this big jerk here. 
Now, if we go and manually uh, mark this scene out on the video footage, it's really tough to track a jerking movement like that because what you're doing is you're manually setting little reference markers and when they go out of frame, so somewhere that the camera isn't currently showing, they get lost and Blender does not like that and so it has a hard time figuring out where your camera is. So instead of using automated markers through Blender, you end up having to manually go through and tell Blender exactly where they are. Let me show you. Hit the plus sign, go to VFX, go to motion tracking. Now we want to open up a piece of footage. I'm going to use the same one. And that's found in the unzipped uh, file from the uh, Blender track. We'll open the clip, zoom it back, set the scene frames. We can use detect features to find marker spots. You need a minimum of eight for Blender to calculate your camera movement from your video. So it finds all these features. So then what we want to do is we want to track forward and backwards to allow those markers to figure out where the camera is moving. And you'll notice down here that even though my clip is 440 frames, it stopped. And it stopped basically where the camera jerks. It completely lost its path. Detect features again. Track forward. Detect features again. Track forward. And it finally works. So that one little spot in here really messed it up. Now normally you would track forwards and backwards and you'd only detect features once because you want to use the same markers which are these little doodads right here. Now if we go to solve for camera motion, we have a solve error of 32.2. And from what I understand, a solve error more than two uh, is terrible. Next, we need to add a camera. Shift A, camera. Then we set as background, set origin, set up tracking scene, creates a foreground and a background in which we have a ground plane. And let's see how we did. Hmm. Doesn't look great, we're still inside a box. And that's exactly the case. So the camera is inside the cube and it's not away from the origin like it should be. That's a fail. So select all A, X, delete. We can track this manually. However, it's a process. Adding markers and you'll notice if I do it continuously just by using the right arrow to move forward one frame at a time. On a frame I don't move it, I still have to hit G and click to keep the motion track. This is very time consuming. You need at least eight markers. So I actually went and did this on a scene and it took me a couple of hours easily. If everything had gone right, this is the way it should look. I have my camera, it's out in space, I've got my origin point, and I've got all these little datums, reference points, that enabled the tracking. So I can go to my camera, play my footage, and my camera moves around just like it did when I took the footage. So I would way rather use Blender Track to take the video and put markers in for me. 
the one thing I have to say is nice about the blender feature is that if you've got footage where the camera doesn't jump around all crazy like the automatic tracking feature does work well and when you're done you can set the origin and you can also automatically create a floor and a wall. Another cool thing about the blender motion tracking that's built in when you're all done it sets up a foreground and a background collection and this helps with how you view things through your camera when you're setting up shadow catchers and stuff and it also adds all the compositing nodes to do that. Now I've messed around a little bit with trying to recreate this and I have not figured out how. So this is a real bonus to using Blender's way instead of Blender Track. Everything has its place. My camera is set up, now I need to create the scene. Of course, in this one I didn't put an empty or reference point uh, with Blender Track right in the exact spot where I want to place my model. So I'm going to click on this empty, Shift S, cursor to selected, I'm going to go Shift A, add empty, take the empty, Go G, Y, G, X, G, Y. Go into the side view mode, spin ourselves around, and I want to be just in between these two. So G, Z. Then Shift S cursor to selected. This is where I'll bring in any of my other models. I'm going to add in a ground plane I already made. File append ground. This is just a plane subdivided with multi-resolution modifier on it. And then it was sculpted a little bit to match the divots in the hills and the snow. Give it some texture when the shadows fall on it. That's all it's going to be is a shadow catcher. So I'm going to scale it, uh, control A, apply the scale. I'm going to swivel myself around here. I want it to rotate and be on a slope that basically matches the slope of these empties here, these reference points. That looks pretty good. Uh, that's really off. I'll rotate that again, R. Yeah, adds a little something, something to it. Now I'll add in my animated model. And there it be. Scale it down. Shift S selection to cursor. I'm going to rotate it so that it faces the camera a little more. So RZ. It's always a learning process. I'm going to parent this to the empty. So this isn't in exactly the right spot. The head's cut off. So I'm going to parent uh, armature to the empty, so select armature, shift select the empty, control P, object keep transform. Now I can move the empty around. I got my scene all figured out. I added in my model and made the animation work, just a little NLA strip. I'm not going to get into all the details because I just don't have time for it. I also added in a particle effect. Everything is working fairly well, but I don't have any lights. So it's time to add in that HDRI. 
So just go to scene, color, environment texture, open, and dark. Looks like we got some lighting. Ooh, yeah, it's not lined up quite right. Go to the shading tab and we'll go to world. So I want to add a mapping node. And I want to add a texture coordinate node. Get it all lined up. That is super close. Maybe just go back a hair. That's, oh yeah, that's right. That's what I'm looking at. That might be about it. Very close, very close. And close counts here. And one more thing, since we have the HDRI in and we want to see the video clip, not the HDRI, which is what was rendering previously. Uh, we're in Cycles Render, so just go to Film and hit Transparent. And that will allow the HDRI to provide lighting, but not show up in the render. Or so I'm told. <laughs> I think I've got it. Go to Compositing. Click Use Nodes. Click off them so you can move them around. Are we ready? No, not yet. First I want to set up a couple layers. Now we probably don't have to do this, but I am copying what Blender's motion track does automatically and I can see how it would be helpful. So we're going to do a new layer. We're going to call it foreground. A new layer. Call it background. My T was in the way. Now we're going to organize our collections. I'm going to call the collection with my rig inside of it, this empty, that's going to be my foreground. And I'm going to call my camera one background. And I'm just going to move these references into the background. Delete this. We've got them set up. Now you need to actually set the objects inside of these collections to the right layer. So select them, hit M, move them to foreground, select the ones in the background, hit M, move them to background. We want to go over here and trigger our extra toggles. Let's see if I remember this correctly. When we're in the background layer, we want the foreground to be a indirect only. When we're in the background layer, we want the background to be a holdout. Now those should be set up correctly. So let's add a movie clip. Shift A. We're going to use this little drop down and select the video from Blender Track. Load that up. We're going to add a scale node. We're going to move it to render size and connect those. Next, we duplicate this. Render layer, Shift D, drop it down. I'm going to zoom out a bit. So set the top one to background and the bottom one to foreground. Then we need to add an alpha over node, Shift D. And we'll duplicate that, Shift D. How you use these alpha nodes 
is whatever goes in the top image slot is going to be behind whatever goes in the bottom image slot. So we want our movie clip to be behind our background and then we want this to be behind our foreground. Then we can attach the image. We can add a viewer node. V to zoom out and we're ready to rock. Now I go to a frame where something is happening and I hit F12 and then I decide not to because that's way too big. First I'm going to go to my output settings and I'm going to go down to 25%. Then I'm at a frame where something is happening in my animation. Then I'm going to hit F12 to render out an image and see how our compositing looks. So we have particles, we have a model, and we have some footage. It's looking good so far. Of course there is a ton more that can be done with compositing. I've barely scratched the surface of what can be learned. For the final render, I've gone back to shading, to world, my HDRI, I've cranked it up to three. I also added in a spotlight. I put the light at about 500 watts. And this basically means that now my model is well lit from all directions and then I'm getting a little bit more of a highlight effect from the direction that the sun would be coming from. Seems to be looking quite well so far. Now I'm finally ready to render. So I just go through all my settings, cycles, GPU, leaving everything the way it is. We got transparent on. I changed my resolution to 1920 by 1080. I'm rendering at 70% to save some time. I also cut down on the length of my video, so I'm only rendering where animation is happening. Rendering an MPEG video, MP4, medium quality. Hopefully I have enough time to do the full render. I'm not triggering any of the extra composite layers. I just don't have time to play around with that anymore. So hopefully this will turn out excellent. Control F12 will start the render. And hopefully this helps somebody. Thanks so much for watching and I'll probably never do another one again. <laughs> okay, I might. I might. Who knows?